from the production studios of Epic Financial Strategies here in Red Bank, New Jersey. We are Infinity X, giving a stage and microphone to human excellence in the constant pursuit of creating opportunities for entrepreneurs, people who are aspiring artists, people who are looking to do things at a higher level by hearing and listening to people who have been there, done that. And ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I have to tell you, when you're talking about been there and done that, look no further than Johnny Truesdale, right? Johnny, how you doing tonight? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing really, really well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Johnny Truesdale. Johnny is a Grammy award-winning producer, uh, has done work with, uh, I mean, I'm going to let you go down the list, but has done work with Tony Bennett, has done work with John Mayer, just to name a few. Uh, he currently is residing and running a production studio uh, down in Nashville, Tennessee. He's worked on the East Coast. He's worked on the West Coast. And, you know, when when we uh, have the opportunity to have conversation um, with with somebody uh, to you know at, that that has accomplished so many different things uh, and is as accomplished as you are, Johnny. It's just it's it's a it's a real honor and privilege to share the microphone with you, um, ladies and gentlemen. This e you know this afternoon, this evening, the the outcome that I'm hoping that you find is that. The state of the music and entertainment industry has changed forever and is continuing to change and is evolving in ways that you just don't know. You have no idea. If you're aspiring as an artist, if you're aspiring as an entertainer, if you're aspiring as a music songwriter, a producer, you need to listen to the next 45 minutes with what Johnny has to say. Uh, because we're just getting to know Johnny, knowing the circle and the people that he, that he surrounds himself with and that he works with, um, you're in for a treat tonight. So, Johnny, again, thank you so much for, for joining me this evening, brother. Uh, you're, at, you're down in Nashville right now, right, um, uh, with, the, with the cold front that came through right now, right? <laughs> Yeah, the unusual cold front. But, I mean, everybody thinks Nashville is, like, super south. It's kind of in the middle, yeah. and so you kind of get in the middle weather, if that makes any sense. It does. It does. I uh, Well, when I relocated down there, I was actually thinking it was a little bit more southern weather. You know, I was hoping for that, but uh, when I left for the airport this morning, I quickly realized that um, it ain't, right? <laughs> right. But, right. Uh, exactly. John, and now, Johnny, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Philadelphia. So oh, I just okay. I just got back from Philadelphia this morning visiting my grandmother, who is uh, going to be 90 years old coming up in the next uh, six months here. God so. bless her. Oh, that's amazing. It's, and is she is she like one of those folks that just never left Philadelphia? She never left Philadelphia. No. Yeah, so she's been there her whole life. She was married to my grandfather for 65 years, I think. Wow. So, I love it. you know, that's pretty. It. Pretty epic. I I, <laughs> really I, is. I couldn't even live long enough to be married that long. You <laughs> yeah, know. You know, seriously. <laughs> I can't even drive 65 miles an hour, you know? <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> and, and Johnny, like, you know, so being from, being from Philadelphia, maybe not necessarily known, unless, you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe not necessarily being known as, as, as a really, really high-level musical city. Uh, am I right about that or am I wrong? Uh, yes and no. Hall and Oates are from there. Oh well, there you so go. Okay. If you if you don't consider them high level, but I don't know oh, what I is. Do. But <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but no, not maybe in the sense that you're thinking, Dave. Um, it. I left when I was 18. Okay. So, I went to live in New Orleans. I joined the military. Wow. Um, so I was in the Air Force. I have a. So I have a musical background because I've been playing guitar. Since I was a teenager, I'll give you a quick background. That's yeah, probably please. the easiest thing to Love do. It. Yep. Um, I I went into the Air Force. I learned avionics and electronics. So hooking this up to that and all that is is really pretty basic to me. Because if you can fix an F fifteen, you can hook up a microphone to record say. somebody's voice. It's <laughs> yeah, really. I would say so. <laughs> right. Um. After I got out, I moved to Boston for a while, and that's where I kind of started recording other people. Hmm. So I got into recording bands, and back in the 90s, this is back in the 90s, way back in the 90s, right. <laughs> um, you had to, to get like a gig at a, at a club or, you know, when you would go see bands live or whatever. Yeah. 
these bands would audition, they'd have to have cassette tapes. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yo, how, how quickly we forget, you know? It's unbelievable. So I would go to their practice space, and I had like four or five microphones. I had no idea what I was doing. But I, I kind of made it sound good enough, and I would edit their tracks and and give them a, a nice tape to, with like four songs on it so they could send out to the club owners. And that's kind of how I got started with wanting to record other people other than kind of just being in a band myself. Yeah. And it it yeah. kind of, and there was nobody to tell you how to do it. Um, I eventually, um, I went to school. I finished, I got my, my degree. I have a, I have a, a bachelor's in it. Hmm. So, um, again, super nerdy computer electronic stuff. Um, but one day I decided um, I was about 32 years old and I said, I want to change. I want to do this all the time. Mm. I was kind of doing it. At that point I was in New Jersey, New York. Okay. And I went to school at SAE and um, uh, nine months later I was working in a recording studio. No kidding. And I worked my way up to being a staff engineer within three months. Um, I think and, the computer thing helped. I could fix all the computers. I could fix things. And um, that's how I that's how I got into it. I started working for Tony Bennett's son. I worked with Whoa. Uh, Mike, Whoa. Mike, that's <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, you you just heard that right. Uh, you started working with Tony Bennett's son. How did that happen? So I did something when I went to school, here's what they told. And, and this is the thing, I guess this is going to be kind of the theme for what I'm, what I'm talking about is yeah. um, everybody's going to tell you that you're doing it wrong. Hmm. And if you, if you believe in the way that you're doing it and you approach it with all seriousness, you can kind of make stuff happen. So I had this thing where I said, they said I was too old to do it. And they said, well, you 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 got you can't you have to go see these people i said well what if i send i got nice resume paper and i send mm. a resume out and i send look i'll intern at your studio i kind of did this whole thing and i and i had nice envelopes printed out you know where i didn't even fold fold the resume and then what i would do is i would estimate how long it would take to get to them and then i would call them and ask to speak to them and see if they got it hmm. So I, I did all these studios in New York and New Jersey, and I had, I had a couple in New York answer me and a couple in New Jersey. And um, I, Day answered me. His name is Day Bennett. Okay. Uh, Day answered me, and um, I came in to see him. It wasn't far from my house. So I uh, he said, look, I can't pay you right away, but if you want to kind of sit in and you want to learn some stuff. And I did that. I jumped in. I fixed computers. Uh, they had to do some soldering on one of the large consoles. Mm. I, I sat and I did that in the basement over Christmas. And Johnny, let me ask you real quick. Was this a paid or a non-paid internship? The first 90 days was non-paid. I did Un it completely for nothing. Unbelievable. At 32 years old. At 32, you did that. Yeah. In and New I York. was and I was there about 50 or 60 hours a week. Holy crap, ladies and gentlemen. Replay on uh, weareinfinityx.com, we are infinityx YouTube and on Spotify. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 60 hours non-paid yeah. 90 days. That is you want to talk about desire. Holy cow. Go ahead, brother. I'm I'm just I'm loving this. So, you know, and then after that I I started uh, you know, uh, 3 months later they started giving me sessions and I did like the crappy overnight sessions mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you start at like 10 o'clock at night and and you know then it progressed on where i started assisting things and then uh bigger things you know and that's how i got into so the so the grammy was for engineering in 2009 so i did this i had my grammy within two years of Whoa. me walking in there doing that <laughs> unbelievable because what I, I just had a lot of people just tell me I couldn't I couldn't do any of this. And I was like, well, well, OK, now I'm going to go do that. So it was you can't do this. Yes, I can. And I and I did it so that that Grammy was for engineering Steve Martin's first banjo album. 
Wait a wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Right, I don't know if you just caught everything. That first of all, to go from you know non paid internship to two years later uh, being a, a a Grammy award winner for producing none other than St- Steve Martin. For engineering, uh, engineering the album. Yeah, so I recorded the album. And and correct me if I'm wrong, he's like one of the world's best banjo players. Uh, He's considered that now. That was his first album. And (laughs) and what's funny is it's still the only Grammy he's won for playing banjo. Is that right? Oh, my God. That's unbelievable, man. So I'd like to believe that I have something to do with that. I would say you probably (laughs) (laughs) I would say you did, brother. Holy mackerel. What was it like? What was it like getting the notification that you were going to be a Grammy Award winner? I think that was, at the time I was married, that was for my wife, Mm. my grandparents, um, the people who knew me. Yeah. I uh, I know this sounds crazy, but the the Grammy doesn't make me uh, like doing this. I enjoy doing this. And that was for everyone else, Dave. That was that was their award. That wasn't for me. That was so they could go Oh yeah. He he my grandson, my brother, my husband, my whatever won this award and then everybody stopped saying that I was playing around at that point. Mm. That's when it became oh, he's he's not playing around anymore. I mean, I, and, and, and such a great access point. And this is so universal. Uh, folks, this message that he's putting out there is universal for anybody in business, especially somebody who's running a business or starting one. Um, I can't imagine that the, uh, you know, it's so funny, Young Gray's calling me. Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I can't imagine that that first two years, which is blood, sweat, and fucking tears, right? Straight up and down. I can't imagine that that was easy on your marriage. I can't imagine it was easy on folks around you. You have to have a massive level of support, right? right. But was, I mean, it, it, like, it, was it was it as hard as it sounds like it was? No, and and because I had the love for it and the determination. Hmm. And if you have those things, I know that sounds like corny and he's calling me um, <laughs> we should put him on three-way i swear to god that's hysterical <laughs> so um no i think if you have the love for it and a determination um i think that's it i mean you you have to have the skill set yeah but that comes from love and determination you know the ten thousand hours yeah the ten thousand hours to do this is more like twenty five thousand hours Right. I, I believe it's like that because you have to take from so many, you take from all these things you're taking from the good. I'm taking from my guitar knowledge. I'm taking from fixing an airplane knowledge. I'm taking from people skills. So you got to kind of, so you need all these. It's almost like you have to go to the school of music, the school of electronics and the school of people. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> and and throw entrepreneurship in there too, you know. I mean, <laughs> right, and knowing how to survive when things get slim, or exactly. knowing how to make the deal to maybe take less money for the thing that you really love. Yeah, and and, and you know that sort of thing. Sometimes that's the sacrifice that you have to make. You go, look, I really want to work on this, yeah. so I'll come off my my price because I'd like to I'd like to do this or whatever. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, replay WeAreInfinityX.com, WeAreInfinityX YouTube, and on Spotify, and all the other channels that we're on, which is quite a few. Um, so, Johnny, so, so, so you win the Grammy, right? Um, mm-hmm. Work on, you know, uh, do, do the work on, on Steve's album. What happened next? I have to imagine that opened massive doors for you. Uh, I think I just, I worked on many more things after that. It was kind of, that's when I worked with, I worked with Harry Belafonte, I worked on, I was recording with Day and his father because Day was producing Tony. So mm. I would, you would engineer if Day was producing his father. Um, you know, that sort of thing. I worked with a lot of jazz guys. Uh, I'm not a jazz guy. I'm a rock guy. Yep. Um, 
And that's what's interesting for me is, um, I mean, and that's kind of like a good segue. I got to work with a lot of different things. Yes, yes. And um, even though my love is guitar and guitar-oriented music, um, I kind of like other things. I started out as a kid who, like many people my age, uh, Michael Jackson was the biggest thing in the world. 100%, brother. Changed my life when I was a kid and, yeah. and, um, that changed out. And I don't think young people understand how like people who weren't there, how big of a deal he really was. Absolutely. Like when we say, Oh, this so-and-so is the biggest star in the world. There was no doubt that he was the biggest star in the world. It was like un in, in un every way. Questionable, unquestionable without a doubt. He was superior to Muhammad Ali, and, in, you know, in I mean, pop like, culture and, yeah. and music. There was nobody who could, and and you could see that if you just just go look at how long his his album stayed on the charts and how many hit singles he had and yeah. and everything else and so I it started with pop and so so that pop stuff still I still go back I still like stuff like people are amazed that I can like talk about Taylor Swift or what they're like what how can yeah. you talk about wait you. You listen to Metallica and, and Slayer. What what's Taylor Swift have to do with that? Um, and it's just a different side. I, I I like that side. I like both sides. I like to record things. I you know somebody goes well. How many banjos did you record before you recorded Steve Steve's banjo? None. I I, I jumped into it. I can go. All right, I'm going to record this, and and kind of just figure out what microphone I'm going to use, et cetera, et cetera, and just jump into it because you can't be afraid when you do this stuff. And why should you be? You're not a surgeon, so nobody's going to die if mm. this doesn't. There's no, this is not life dependency. Right. Although working with some musicians and artists, you would think that it was, <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of part of the game, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> But yeah, so that's, I, I kind of went from that, I went into teaching. I went out to LA because okay. I said, like you said, it's too cold there. Yeah. Let's go somewhere warmer. And LA was warmer, but it was also even more expensive. Mm -hmm. And I taught when I was out there at the, at the school that I went to. And I think, and I was still doing stuff, but I think teaching gave me another insight on how people learn this stuff especially like an 18 year old kid that comes in sure and they just got out of high school right right so they have no reference i was 32 when i decided i was going to do this full time right. somebody who's 18 doing that was miraculous yes. right yes so i did that i got tired of it costing too much money hmm. and i said Nashville seems nice. <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's what I did. I, I, I went to Nashville and I made my own studio. Um, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I have recently sold my studio and my house. Wow. But, but I own the property next door and okay. I'm going to build a new one. Woo! I love that. I love that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Johnny Truesdale. You can find him at Johnny Truesdale on Instagram. And uh, the name of the studio, Johnny, by the way, is? Well, the name of the studio, I don't have a new name. So okay. I, so the old name was Firefly Sound. Okay. But I'm going to retire that, and I'm going to come up with a new name when I build the new studio. Because the studio is fine. It's one thing, right? But I'm the reason that people come to me. Absolutely. Uh, the stu studio equipment's beautiful. I love equipment. I have lots of it. It's kind of ridiculous. Some some of the so much stuff I have, but that doesn't make that doesn't make it. What makes it is knowing a how to use it, and knowing what, knowing um, how to use it, but also just knowing your equipment. You know how well, when you get a new car, you go yeah. to a, you go somewhere, you rent a car, and you can't find where do you put it in drive or reverse and mm -hmm. you fumble around with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well you can't do that when you're working with recording stuff you have to 
know where it is set it to this set it to that do yep. this do that you know yep. do that whole thing you know so you can't fumble around and and that's the thing that people they think they need all this stuff but what you really need is to be good at the stuff that you have mm, absolutely Absolutely. And Johnny, let, you, let's let's play in that space for a minute, because, OK, this is uh, you know, this is a little bit where I'm going to say rubber meets road. Right. What are some things that you like as you look on on your storied and decorated career? Right. Um, what are some things that you'd say, OK, are, were not mistakes, but were learning opportunities that if you could do over again, you would. And 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 part two to that question is what do you see engineers and or producers doing wrong in this day and age? Um, okay, so the first question, I would not worry so much. Hmm. I was awfully worried about it, and maybe that's what made me better, who knows. Hmm. But... Uh, and as I get older and as I do this more, the less I worry, the better off it turns out to be. Yeah. So yeah. I think worrying too much, less worry, more do, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and what – what the second question is um, – The second what, question – yeah, what, do you, what are you seeing um, producers, engineers, uh, you know, what are you seeing – things that they really maybe they haven't adapted to yet or that you just flat out think that okay they're they're not doing they're not doing it right right they're not doing it th the way that they ought to be doing it what are some common mistakes that you see being made well because they're maybe worrying they they go to youtube they find someone who says this is how you record vocals mm. this is how you record this and then they it's like somebody wrote it it's like gospel so we have a Bible, uh, and that's for Christianity. Mm -hmm. The music world doesn't have a Bible. There's not one way to do it. You have to find – yeah, there's procedures that we have, but you have to develop your style and your thing just like you would if you were a musician. You have to have a way of going about it, and I think too much – I read it on Wikipedia. I saw it on YouTube, and that's how you do it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and 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 yep. that's it. And yep. that's and that's not that's not how, that's not how it works. Because I know other famous engineers and producers. I'm friends with a lot of them. We all do it a little differently than each other, and mm -hmm. we like talking about how we do it differently, and we like sitting there BSing with each other, saying calling each other out and saying we do it wrong but we know we know that there is no wrong or right but we like oh i do it like this well i would do it like this and so but we but we mess around because we know that there is more than one way to do something yeah yeah and now johnny let me but god this just this is so compelling because there's so many different questions that are going through my head yeah so if so if you know, you're jockeying back and forth saying, okay, I could do it this way or I do it this way. Is the pursuit – I would imagine once upon a time it was the pursuit specifically of just creating the most fire soundtrack that there is, right? You know, just absolute perfection in music. It, it, today, do you have to be accounting for things like, okay, well – where is this going to be popular geographically? You know, like, you know, where is this going to be a pop be popular streaming or on the radio or, you know, on YouTube? I have to imagine the analytics have to play a factor in engineering and production so much more today than they ever have before. I think some people may be thinking like that. Mm, um, okay. But I think the artist has to figure that out. That comes mostly from the artists and what's true to them. Um, you're not going to ask Dream Theater to write a Taylor Swift song, and you're not going to ask Taylor Swift to write a Dream Theater song. Right. They know they know their audience, so they know what they're going at, and and so that has to come from the artist. Okay. Your job as a producer and engineer in 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 that sense is to help them make it help their vision get better a better version of that vision because artists can't see the 
they can't see they can't see the overall they can't see the end game they can't see the the finished product hmm. like when i hear something i i'm i'm aiming to the finish line constantly i'm aiming to get to the finished product the artist thinks they're done with the song is the minute they write it <laughs> so, so that's, awesome. that's that's not the way it works the yeah, way it actually yeah. works is the production the mix the whole thing that's part of the song think about we were talking about michael jackson yeah and if i say to you i say dave think about the song billy jean mm -hmm. and like what's something that comes to mind right away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Yeah. No that, doubt. Absolutely. It's exactly. Yes. So the groove woo, of woo, the, of woo woo right. <laughs> I mean exactly. immediately. Uh, so th those body, are elements. You know? yeah. You're talking about elements. Yeah. So, but that's not how it started. Michael Jackson didn't think of that first. That probably came later after he had the chords and the melodies. Then they got together, so Quincy Jones. Yeah. They figured that that groove out, yeah. and like you said, the first thing you thought of was the groove. It's the, oh, the bass, the bass, the the bass that hits you in that. It's just like it's unlike. It's unlike that groove is unlike any other groove. I've ever encountered, and I'm know? very sure that was done nowhere near when the song the song was written, and then the groove was. They came up with the groove later on. That is crazy. You know? That, you know, very rarely would have that been the first thing that was done when you're writing a song that comes later. So you have to know how to approach it. Is this going to be a dance song? Because the lyrics to Billie Jean are kind of interesting. Yeah. They're not a party. They're not party lyrics. No, not at all. Not at all. It's like the kid is not my son. He's, you know, <laughs> essentially. But you, but you yeah. could play that at a party. And the girls will hit the dance floor. No question about it. Just like it was freaking Chris Brown. Absolutely. You know, no doubt about it. Absolutely. Right. So that's wow. the thing. That's the producer and engineer's vision hmm. is to help that get realized. And what if we did it like this? What if we stripped it down? And it was this. Or what if we sped the song up? Or what if we slowed it down? Hmm. Or what if we put drums in it? What if we took some of the drums yeah. out? Right. You know, right. what if we put more vocals in it? So the ooh oohs, I'm very sure that those weren't in there. The, the song was done and they probably got an idea for that. Michael could have sang something and Quincy Jones goes, what's that? Let's do that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what Quincy Jones was. And, and somebody like Bruce, um, who was the engineer on that, um, he had to make Michael sound good. Now that Michael sounded good anyway, but right. like, but still, it sounds superb. That's 40 years ago. This album is released 40 years ago. Literally 40 years ago. Yeah. Last month was 40 years. That's unreal. It's unreal. It's and, still so And relevant. it's still... How, think about that. Yeah. Do you have anything from 40 years ago? No. I don't. No, I absolutely do not. No. But, I mean, Bill, that, but Billie Jean and Thriller holds up 40 years later. It's crazy. So it's, so it's like a time capsule, but then again, it's timeless. Yes. Yeah. And by the way, speaking of timeless, I want to get into your opinion on NFTs and all, all, all different types of things. I just want to put out there, ladies and gentlemen, we are Infinity X Stage and Microphone with Human Excellence. This is Johnny Truesdale just walking you through the magic that is the music industry. Uh, replay, we are InfinityX.com. We are InfinityX YouTube and on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Um, Johnny, when you were sharing what you were sharing, <laughs> I have to admit, um, being that our proximity to one another is with, um, you know, an incredibly dear friend who is in the hip hop uh, industry and, and doing obviously just huge, huge things. But when you were talking, I, I went to the movie straight out of Compton. I swear to God. And the reason I did, have you ever seen? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you've seen that. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the scene when Dr. Dre? is coming up with the hook for, or you know, I guess the, the melody or the groove for nothing but a G thing. And then, mm -hmm. and then Snoop Dogg walks over, he walks over, he's like, oh, Dre, what is that, you know? And then he's, and then, and then based off of the keyboarding, he jumps right into one, two, three, two, you know? And, and is that, 
is that how it is today? Like, is it has that has that trend of what happened with Michael and Quincy and that product? Is that shifted to here's a beat, write a rhyme kind of thing, or like is it still it, 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 is it still the way that it used to be? It could it could go both ways. I think it's a combination of what you're saying. So I think that's, and I think even back then it was as well. It was a combination. So what happens sometimes is, um, an example, Young Gray, we were talking about Young Gray, who he'll, yeah. he'll do something when I'm recording him. And, um, uh, his, uh, his friend and producer will kind of would be behind me sitting behind me and, um, Young Gray will do something and we'll go, Ooh, ooh, ooh that's mm -hmm. it. Do it like that. Yeah, but and because he's on the mic, he doesn't even kind of hear what he's doing. Yeah. His flow, his rhythmic ability, whatever you want to call it, happens. Do it like that cuz that sounds great. And and let's and sometimes they they can't tell that they're not doing the flow right or singers can't tell the pitch is not right or or whatever the case may be. So um so that does happen where you go ooh 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 and and that's why sitting alone in the room by yourself and not working with other people can be a real big problem because there's mm. nobody to go, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. that's really cool. Let's do that. That's incredible. And that's, 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 what, that's what we need to keep up. I, 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 it's fine working by yourself. It, it really is. But you literally need another human being to go, that's dope or that sucks. Right. Cause right. some things that I thought were things that I played on guitar, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, yeah, it's great. And then I listen back and I go, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or I go, or I go, oh God, this sucks, but I'll, I'll send it to them anyway. And they're like, oh my God, oh, God that, that was, was amazing. fire. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes you don't know, yep. you, you don't know. So you need other human beings there that feedback that, that, push and pull that comes from working with an artist and when it when it happens maybe it's a lyric suggestion maybe it's a, a flow suggestion and you play it back over the speakers i'm pointing to the speakers because i have speakers right here yep. in front of me yep. when yep. you play it back and it's bumping and the whole room is slamming everybody goes oh mm -hmm. that's how you know when everybody gets squinty eyed and goes oh that's how you know <laughs> That's how you know That's you got you, it right. You got it right. Oh, my God. I love it. We are Infinity X stage and microphone. This is Johnny Truesdale just dropping knowledge here, boy. Oh, my God. I'm just loving this. Now, Johnny, you're a rock and roll guy, right? For, mm -hmm. yeah. How did you get involved with hip-hop? I had – I don't know. For whatever reason, hip-hop guys like me. I, I, I can't I, – I think it's this. I don't care about the hip-hop game. I care about the music. I care about making it bump yes. and flow. And the other part, I don't care about. And 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 that's fine. And, and and there's nothing wrong with the persona of being a rapper and the that game. That's fine. That's for them to do. Mm -hmm. I want to do my side of it. Let's make it slam. So everybody goes, ah, oh, that sounds great. Or the bass or the kick drum or the whatever. It could be the snare. It could be the flow of the rhyme. It could be the echo that repeats on the voice. And they're, ah, oh, it's so cool. Or, you know, whatever that is. What it, the sound of it, that's kind of my job. The game of being part of the game, I, that, that stuff, the, I, that's why I don't want to be in a band. I don't want to mm. be thanks i'm done and it enables me to kind of because like if you're a hip-hop guy you're doing hip-hop stuff or you're rapping and if you're a rock guy you're playing guitar or you're playing bass or you're whatever so i get to work with a rock band and i'm in a rock band for a little while mm -hmm. and then i work with hip-hop guys and i'm part of the hip-hop crew for a little while and i work with a female acoustic player and i'm her backup band or or, or her coach or whatever and it's so I get to like kind of do little pieces of different kinds of music. So it never gets old because 
I don't feel like I'm I'm doing the same thing every day. That's incredible. Oh my God, that is just so incredible. And that's why you don't work a day in your life, brother, because you're literally doing something new and exciting and fun each and every single day that you continue to have. Sure, it's for. it's work. And, and well, yeah, yeah. But right. I, I think the people, another thing that people don't understand is that part of the work, we talked about that human element, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that is the biggest part of the job. If you can't, relate to another human being when you're recording them or you're doing anything you'll never do this i don't care how good you are at it you have to be able to relate to them it because again we talked about how much fun michael jackson was when we were younger yeah um fun is how it has to be it, it has to feel fun and when it does then then you know you're doing it right right you know if it's fun if not it shouldn't be stressful. If it's stressful, what's the point of that? Again, remember I said it's not brain surgery. That's it's it has to be it has to have that element in it where it's fun to do and stuff and and I know that musicians take it very serious. Mm. But if you don't have fun doing it, then there's no point in in doing it. I know that sounds No, that is like it's it, 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 it's beautifully cliche because that makes all the sense in the world, you know, and I'm sitting here as you're sharing, Johnny, I'm sitting here saying to myself, Jesus, you know, if I was if I was an artist, you would literally I would be banging on your door begging to work with you. You know what I mean? And one of the things that you shared with me on the phone last night that I thought was so interesting is that many of. Uh, and I guess we're, we're kind of in the state of where music is today, but many of the artists that you work with, you've never even met. That's correct. In person. Yeah. That's incredible. How do you develop that rapport and relationship when you actually have not been in a studio physically with these people? So sometimes it's like this or FaceTime. Yeah. Um, uh, sometimes it's phone calls like you and I had a good phone call and we didn't meet face to face. Oh, that's I true. We had a, 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 so yep. uh, it's because you have to understand you're providing a s service to them. So they're your client and you must think of them as such, yep. you know, so yep. they got to be comfortable with you. You don't want, you don't want the guy. Okay. Here's, you know what, you know what I want? I want somebody who knows how to manage my money to be a financial planner. And I want somebody who knows how to fix my toilet to be a plumber. Right. <laughs> right. It's so, so true. Though. I don't want my it's financial so planner fixing my toilet and plumbing, I don't want right? my plumber yeah. <laughs> telling me how to financially plan. And by the way, and by the way, Johnny, we are in an economy right now where, you know, like a year ago, your barber was talking to you about, you know, what what's happening in the real estate market and what's happening in the markets. Right. You know, right. And, and now you're in you were in one where they're telling you to get out. Look, run away from those people. Right. That right. is fake confusion at its finest right there. They have no clue what's going on. Right. But <laughs> so when people tell me, well, oh, well. My friend was listening to the mix and the blah, blah, blah. And I went, well, what does your friend do? Well, he's a, he's a, he mows lawns. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, well, what? First of all, he probably can't hear anything cause he's mowing lawns. And, and second of all, um, or it doesn't matter what he does. He could be a doctor right. and I like, I'm not singling him out cause he mows lawns or a doc. The, I don't know what they're listening on. I don't know what their experience is. So when they tell me, oh, this, what I always kind of tell artists is artists want so many people to give them advice mm. on everything they need. And the problem is that's not what they need. They need the few people who know yes. them yes, and or the music that they're trying to achieve. Everyone else is static. Everyone else is noise, hmm. right? Does everybody like Guns N' Roses? No. Probably not, right. but a lot of people do. So they did very well. Absolutely, it's it's just it's just a point. Nobody's, but because Guns N' Roses listen to the people 
who were into them, and they, they went and did a path, and it became very big. Mm-hmm. I, I use Guns N' Roses as a, as a point because they kind of went into a bidding war for them. They were, they were a very smart band that went into a bidding war who was going to make their first album. Mm. That doesn't happen very often. You, people are usually begging to get a record deal. Record companies went into a bidding war to sign Is Guns that Roses. right? I never heard that. That's unbelievable. That's yeah. unbelievable. So let me ask you now, state of music where we are right now, who is the artist – that labels, I mean, and you don't have to single out the, the name or the individual, but the genre, if you will. Who's the artist that, that the labels are competing for now, like frothing at the mouth? I don't, I think other than some of, I think it keeps changing. Mm. I think hip hop artists are very popular now. Hip hop, hip hop and rap artists are very popular now, but I, I don't know because I, I, don't know what the the music industry is doing because these labels have enough power they could literally take anything and push it but in the end we could talk about oh well hip-hop's to the top and this and this is to the top and blah 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 and rock is dead and this is dead and this is here and this is up and this is down but in the end what we do know is pop music in general always survives Mm. every all the time no matter it just, what it changes yeah so so whatever the pop music is so that pop music could have a rock influence that pop music could have a country influence i mean look at i i was talking to my grandmother we'll, we'll circle back to the beginning of it and she turned on that like that music channel that you have on the cable vision yeah and 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 she turned on the country thing and it was today's country yeah and my grandmother turns to me and goes this is not country. Can you help me turn it on to the because it was today's country, which yeah. is more like rock music. It totally is. Like you know, like Florida Georgia line is the first one that comes to mind. That is not yeah. traditional country, right? Right. Or what she's so used it's to anyway. Today's country. So when we say country, we can't even use that anymore yeah. because George Strait doesn't sound like Florida Georgia line. Right. Florida Georgia line takes like some twang slams it to a hip-hop beat and yeah. then let's call it country yeah and, and that's fine i'm not <laughs> yeah. i'm not slagging that they're yeah. doing what they're doing but you have to it's usually what happens is something incorporates something else you know so i think i don't know if there is one big thing but if we take somebody like machine gun kelly yeah 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 he had a lot of success as a hip-hop guy yeah but then he said, oh, I've got to kind of do this pop punk thing and start playing guitar. And I think he has more success. He has. Yeah, he's ridiculous. He's so who knows? So up. who knows? Yeah. That, that's what I'm saying. Who would have thought that? If I, if I said to you, Dave, Machine Gun Kelly five years ago, you would have never mentioned the guitar. Never. Absolutely not. No, no, no. It was all rap all day, right? He does, you know? he does a Motley Crue movie. <laughs> People go, that dude looks like a rock star. Yeah. And he goes... Uh, okay, uh, uh, I'm gonna be a rock star. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and 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 that's, that's it. so you can you don't have to like him, but you have to you have to appreciate that game. Yeah, that going recognizing, hey, people want to see me play this really cool pink guitar, mm. and he plays a pink guitar. I know, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. And 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 I and I even I, I was like, you know. I got to give him credit. It's kind of cool. You yeah. know, <laughs> you know I, 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 I felt the exact same way when I saw it for the first time. I was like, okay, I don't hate that. You know, <laughs> this might be more him than what it was before. Mm. A pr- another prime example of somebody who switched gears and made a giant career out of it was Kid Rock. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he, he constantly was Detroit hip hop. Absolutely. He was rocking the high low and like, you know, he was like, he, he, he was all hip hop all day and that totally has that that changed to rock then it changed to right it changed to country it, it's more multiple times now now he's he, he just does where his heart takes him that's so awesome and 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 you can kind of see that yeah. look how dr dre was hard and and nwa was this thing and then the next thing when he does his solo stuff it's kind of fun yeah, the kind of the hardness goes away. It's Southern California. You know, that's a different thing. Girls in bikinis at the party. 
Well, you mentioned Young Gray. Look at Snoop, right, on Celebrate relative to nothing but a G thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you know, same swag, just, you know, different energy, you know? And so that's people. So that's crazy. If artists don't know where they're going, yeah. I don't know that the record company, the record companies know where things are going. I don't think any of us can know where things are going. We just try to make the best kind of music you can. Uh, another uh, another prime example is Uptown Funk. Mm. That sounds like an old Prince or the Time song from the eighties. Totally does. Yeah. And, uh, and but they found that and said, "Oh, there's a lane. Let's do that lane." And yep. then told everybody, "This is our lane. You're gonna like this." Yeah, right. The song by the Weekends. You know, the the, the uh, I can't the, the name escapes me, but it sounds like a 1980s pop song. Right. Yeah. And 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 I say this: when it comes to that, when it comes to music, mm. you could tell people what to like. No, this is good. Wow. No, it's not. No, it is. Listen to it. And oh, oh, maybe it is kind of good. Because if you could explain to somebody who doesn't know why it would be good, yeah. why it's good, they 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 can turn around and see the good in it. Well, that's and and Johnny, to your point, that is every human being's and my buddy Sean Callagy says this all the time. Our greatest mega power as as humans is our ability to influence others. And you just highlighted it right there. You know, it's you can influence somebody into seeing the good in music, right? Just by doing what you just did. No, listen to this, you know, and if they, you know, whether they're not educated in it or whatnot, right? If, um, you know, if, if, if you position it, you know, if you position, you know, anything essentially the right way, um, you know, you're going to be able to influence their decision making on how they feel about it without a doubt. And some people are more into it than others. There's a story I like to tell about my dad and I were riding in his car. This was only a few years ago. And a song came on the satellite radio, and it was from Peter Gabriel's So album. That's the one with, with um, you know, all his big hits on it. Yep. And I said, man, this album is so important. I said it out loud. And... um. My dad goes, I don't, how can it, how can an album or a song be important? Mm. And, and wait, and he stopped in his tracks and he said, I, I see how that could be important to you. I, I get it. Like he, he thought about it for a second and, and it's like, well, that, that song sledgehammer, it's cool to me. But to you, it's it's important because you learn things with production, and and music is is much more important to me than an average person. So I do think an average person can be swayed yep. by those, and this this can kind of circle back why we need more people who have more experience working. You can't go with all your friends and nobody knows nothing because nothing will come out. 100%. You have to go seek people who know things. Been there, done and that. Because we, we need to keep this ball rolling. Yep, yep. We, people are going to record music <laughs> after I die. And and if one thing that I taught somebody gets passed on to someone else and that happens, then I did my job while I was here. Amen. It, it, we have to keep it going. It's a very po important part of world culture is to record music and listen to music. Everybody straps these things on. They put on the earbuds. That's more part of our of the whole entire world than yep. ever before. Yep. So we got to keep that going. So I think one of the problems and one of the things that we need is people need to seek out people with more experience. And the people who have more experience need to stop holding all the knowledge and amen. you've got to put it out there in the world amen to that folks we are infinity x stage and microphone human excellence this is johnny truesdale just i, I johnny i don't even I, <laughs> I can't even sum up in one sentence the value add and and just the knowledge that you have dropped here this afternoon and, and i have a question for you johnny would you be down for a round two brother because we could keep going like this for hours but <laughs> sure we can do another one <laughs> would you, Absolutely. I, i'll get in touch with you afterwards i just wanted to thank you um, on behalf of the the audience um 
who are aspiring artists, aspiring entertainers, aspiring engineers, aspiring producers, aspiring entrepreneurs, if you have not um, paid attention to Johnny's messaging, the consistency of Johnny's messaging, and the courage in Johnny's mes messaging, replay we are infinityx.com we are infinityx youtube and download it on spotify because there's been a massive massive value add in the message constantly straight throughout it's one of courage and it's it's just uh, johnny i i am truly honored to have shared the last hour with you on this stage brother and i cannot wait to continue to co-create with you man <laughs> thank you you're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Infinity X, stage and microphone, human excellence. This has been Johnny Truesdale. Pay attention, Johnny Truesdale, round two. Replay, we are infinityx.com, Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and um, we are Infinity X YouTube. Johnny, really, really value you, brother. Appreciate you spending time with us this afternoon, and um, you know, God bless you, brother. Appreciate you. Thank, thanks for having me on, Dave. Yeah, anytime, bud. Appreciate it.